Welcome back, survivalists. So the American Red Cross is a humanitarian organization that provides emergency assistance, disaster relief, and disaster preparedness education here in the United States. And on their website, they have a list of 15 specific items that they want you to keep in your home and keep in your emergency kit. And these specific items are gonna help you build a general emergency kit and help you in any number of natural man-made disasters that we often see here in the United States. So whether we're talking about mass forest fires out in California, or winter blackouts down in Texas, or even double hurricanes striking the Gulf Coast, these specific items can help you and your family survive any of these scenarios and build a general emergency supply kit. Now, after you have these essential 15 items, feel free to expand on your kit and really customize it more towards whatever scenario is most likely to occur in your area but do make sure you at least have these 15 core items first. So today I'm gonna to run through what these 15 items are that the American Red Cross wants you to keep in your home, give you a few examples of them, give you my thoughts on them as well. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a few additional bonus items that I also highly recommend that you add to your emergency kit. So the first item that they want you to keep in your home is a good multi-tool. You know, too often in life, it all comes down to having the right tool for the job. If you have the right tool, most jobs are fairly easy. And that's really where a multi-tool comes in handy because this is a general purpose tool that can help you in many, many different scenarios. Now, like most things, you don't necessarily wanna go with the cheapest multi-tool out there. If you see a five or $10 multi-tool, most likely those are gonna break on you the very first time that you use them. You're probably gonna have to spend at least $40, $50 to get a decent multi-tool. And I'm a big fan of the Gerber multi-tools just because I've been using them for years now. Uh, however, there are some other really good multi-tools out there as well. And most multi-tools have very similar designs where they have the pliers at top and then they have a series of different tools that can fold out from the individual handles. So for me, the tools that I use most often with this is probably, the number one is probably gonna be the pliers up here. I find myself using this all the time. But you also have a flathead screwdriver as well as a Phillips head screwdriver, which just really, really comes in handy uh, that you don't have to go searching for those tools. You already have those tools in your pocket. And then of course I use the, uh, the knife blade that comes on this quite often as well. Which one is it? That's this one right here. I use that knife very often. So as long as your multi-tool has those core functions to it, this thing could be literally a lifesaver in an emergency situation. But definitely having a multi-tool in your emergency kit will help you in many, many, many different scenarios. I recommend that you guys have one in your emergency kit and also have one in your car as well. And I'll have a link down in the description below to a good multi-tool that I recommend over on Amazon, as well as links to many of the other items that we'll be talking about today. So the next item that they want you to keep in your home for emergencies is cash. And this may surprise a lot of people, but yes, they're recommending that you have a big wad of cash in your home at all times, preferably in as small of a denomination as possible. If you have a couple hundred dollar bills, that may not really help you out in an emergency situation. And the reason for this is if there's a widespread power outage in your community, many of your stores may still be open and have resources that they can sell you, but they're not going to be accepting credit and debit cards. And also many ATMs, again, are gonna rely on power and simply gonna be off. So you suddenly may find yourself in a scenario where you need to buy some groceries or buy some gasoline, but those stores are only accepting cash and all you have is a debit and credit card and you're just out of luck. And that's why personally, I always have at least a thousand dollars in cash within my home somewhere just for emergency situations like that. And if a disaster scenario is bad enough and gets prolonged enough, you may find yourself trying to buy resources off of your neighbors or trying to pay your neighbors to help you out in some way, like chopping up a tree that fell down during a bad storm. It is not uncommon for here in America for communities to experience a disaster and then have to go up to a week without any power in that area. And if you don't have any cash before that massive power outage, you're just out of luck. You're not gonna have any way to pay uh, other people for resources or for services. So the next item they want you to keep in your home emergency kit is winter blankets. And I'm sure many of those homeowners down in Texas who experienced that multi-day winter blackout wish that they had some extra warm blankets. Now, obviously you can just have additional blankets of any type, but I do recommend that you guys invest in some thick wool blankets. These things are incredibly versatile. And back during the Civil War, they used to issue wool blankets like this to soldiers. And this was essentially their blanket as well as their tent and sleeping bag. 
And these things really are very versatile and they're very thick and very warm. And during a emergency situation, you're really gonna want a thick blanket like this. Now there's many people who go hammock camping that this is what they actually bring out with them. And they lay this down in their hammocks first and then put their sleeping bag on top of this just because they are so thick and heavy and they just provide that extra layer of insulation. Now, if you're in an area that has the possibility of flooding, I do recommend that you keep this extra blanket and your emergency kit up on the second floor just in case your entire first floor does get flooded. You know, it's very easy to see a scenario where your first floor gets flooded and all your beds and blankets get ruined and you're gonna be very grateful that you have some extra blankets like this that are dry and up on the second floor. So get some extra warm blankets to keep in your emergency kit. And if you wanna go above and beyond, invest in some nice wool blankets like this. The next item that they want you to have is water. And like FEMA, they're recommending one gallon of water per person in your household for three days. So if you have five people in your household, you wanna have 15 gallons of water just like this. And you can simply just go out and buy one of these one gallon containers at your grocery store for about a dollar, actually a little less than that. Now I will say that these things sometimes will break over time. The plastic just kind of gives way and they end up spilling, but you can buy some five gallon containers to keep that water in. Now the American Red Cross is actually going above what FEMA is recommending for water. So they're saying that they want you to have one gallon of water per person per day for three days in case you need to evacuate. So you can take that water with you, but they also recommend that you have two weeks supply of water in your home in case you need to shelter in place and your water gets contaminated. Again, we saw this down in Texas during this winter blackout that many of those homeowners couldn't even drink their water coming out of their faucets, that their water got contaminated as well. So the American Red Cross are recommending that you have two weeks of supply of water in your home as well as one gallon of water per person per day for three days in case you need to evacuate. Uh, let, let's say there's a bad forest fire, for example, and you need to evacuate, you can take that water with you, put it in the back of your car or vehicle and drive off. So the next item that they recommend that you stockpile up is non-perishable food. And again, they're recommending that you have three days worth of non-perishable food in case you need to evacuate. So hopefully this food would be mobile and containers that you could grab and go. And they also recommend that you have two weeks worth of food in your home for you and your family in case you need to shelter in place for a longer duration. And there's a couple of different routes that you can go when you're stockpiling food. I recommend that you just buy a handful of these freeze-dried food kits, and these things last for 25 years. So this one here is by Wise Company, has 60 servings of meals. There are already a lot of variety in them, and a lot of these you just need to add hot water, mix it up, and you've got a decent meal ready for you and your family. So I'd figure out how many servings you and your family need. This one has 60 servings and then buy that much supply and keep it in your home somewhere. What I love is that these things are also mobile. So if you had to evacuate, you could easily stick one, two, or three of these in the back of your car and uh, leave, or you just stick this up in your attic and just kind of forget about it until you really need it. Uh, that's what's great about having this long shelf life. So this is definitely one option that I do recommend, and I'll have a couple of links in the description below, again, to some of these products that I recommend, but you do have a few other options. Now, another simpler option is simply buying canned food and just buying this at your grocery store. Every time you go to the grocery store, buy two or three additional canned items and keep them stocked in your pantry. Now, if you do go with this option, canned foods do have a long shelf life, but it's not as long as an emergency kit like that. So what I recommend that you do is buy canned food of items that you actually eat and consume and kind of circulate through your inventory by using it. So put the newer cans in the back and use the cans at the front of your pantry. And I would just set a goal that every time you go to the grocery store, buy two, three, four extra cans like this to bring home and stock up your pantry. Now, another route that you can go with this, which may be the most affordable option, is simply ramen noodles. Now, ramen noodles do get a bad reputation in the prepping community, and it's simply because they have practically no nutritional value whatsoever. It's like eating cardboard. But my argument for this is that most emergencies only last one to two days, right? You may be without power for a day, two days, three days, and the fact that you're not really getting much nutrition from this is not as relevant on those shorter timelines. Now, if you're without power for up to a week and you're relying on nothing but ramen noodles for that entire week, that's probably not good. You're probably not gonna be feeling very good after that. 
but for short-term emergencies, I have no problem with you simply buying some ramen noodles, but you can buy an entire box of these things for five to $10. And if you're just starting building up your preps and your emergency kit, that may be a good place to start buy a big container of these, and then try to add additional proteins and additional vegetables to your emergency uh, supply of food as well. Now, the last option, probably one of the most expensive ones, is that you can buy some of these MREs. This is a meal ready to eat, and this is what the military issues out uh, to their service members when they're out in the field. And these things are very calorically dense. They have a lot of calories in these. And honestly, one of these is probably more like two servings. You may be able to get three servings or three meals out of one of these kits, but they're really not that cheap. Um, you may get something like this for nine to $10. So it's not the most affordable option, but they do have a lot of variety in them and they are fully sealed in and fully packaged. And they do have a very, very long shelf life. So the next item they want you to have in your home is a flashlight. And I recommend that you don't just have one flashlight, but have multiple flashlights because they are that important. And I recommend that you pay attention to what types of batteries they use and try to get all your flashlights that use the exact same type of batteries. There's nothing more frustrating when you have three different flashlights and they all use different types of batteries. So you can go with just a traditional simple flashlight, which you can buy at Home Depot. But I also really like uh, headlamps as well. What's nice about these is that they free up your hands. So if you're working on some sort of project, your hands can be free for you to actually work on that if you have to go find the circuit panel on your home or you have to build a fire, something like that. Having your hands free is incredibly useful. There's a couple other options that you can go with flashlights as well. Um, I do recommend having at least one crank flashlight in your home. These things are just really, really nice to have. I'll be honest that if this was your main flashlight, they are kind of a pain in the neck, but it's good to at least have one of these as like a backup in case all your batteries die. They're usually not as bright as traditional flashlights, and it is kind of a pain in the neck to crank them up, but this is a good last resort. You do have a couple other options as well. I am a big fan of having an omnidirectional flashlight in your home. So something like this, which is a, a lantern essentially, but this, um, it, whenever I lose power, this is the first thing that I go to and it illuminates the entire room versus just having one little spotlight working on something. So again, this gives me a lot of hands-free options where I can set this down and I can prepare food or use the bathroom, do whatever I need to do hands-free versus having to somehow hold a flashlight where you're trying to work on something. So I do recommend that you get some omnidirectional lights, um, which is essentially a lantern. And again, this one is just battery powered, so I can swap those batteries in and out as uh, I wish. There's another option uh, that I really like, and that is th uh, this, which is by Luminade. So this is an LED light, so it's a very low wattage light. It has a solar charger on there, and the body of it's actually inflatable. And the purpose of this body is really just to diffuse that light. And this thing surprisingly puts off a good amount of light. And the idea behind it is that you leave this out in the daytime and it charges up and then you bring this in and this is enough light that you could prepare a meal and kind of work around. And these things are fairly inexpensive. So you may want to buy three or four of these just to keep in your home for emergencies. And then at nighttime, you take this out and you charge it up. And it does have a few different, um, has like a flickering mode for like SS, SOS mode and everything. But these things are really cool. I like bringing these camping and I definitely recommend that you check these out, Luminade. Uh, go look these up and have a few of these in your emergency kits. Again, I'll have links down in the description to where you can find this. So the next item that they want you to have is a battery powered hand crank radio. So I am a big fan of these and I think that this should be one of the very first items that you buy for your emergency kit. So like I said, there is a, a battery in here. So it has a, a replaceable battery, but also has a rechargeable battery, which you can charge from this hand crank as well as charge from the solar panels on top and it has a built-in flashlight. But most importantly, it has an emergency radio built into it. So you can listen for those weather updates. And there's many different types and variations that they have out here. So this one uh, just has more lights on it. And what I like about this one is that, so again, it has the um, replaceable batteries and then it has the rechargeable battery in there. 
and I can actually plug other uh, devices in it like a cell phone and essentially use this to charge my cell phone or charge other flashlights or really anything else that is USB powered. And I can even plug this into my car and charge it from my car. So if you know there's a bad storm coming ahead of time, you could charge this just from like a wall outlet from like a cell phone charger. And now you know you're at least gonna have your emergency radio, you're gonna have one flashlight here, and you're gonna have a potential cell phone charger uh, as a backup with this as well. So there's a bunch of different brands out there and you can buy something like this for $30, $40. And I'm a big fan of making this one of the first items that you buy for your emergency kit, just because of how important communication is in the emergency. And you can use this to listen to the emergency radio broadcast channel and listen for any updates from your local community and local law enforcement. So the next item that they want you to have in your home is simply extra batteries. And I like keeping all of mine in this Tupperware container up high on a shelf. So if my home ever floods, these things should still be secure and waterproof up there. And you do just wanna make sure that you have the right batteries that you actually need. And this is why I recommend that you kind of pay attention, put some thoughts into this and try to get all of your equipment to use the exact same batteries. So if your flashlight uses AA batteries, make sure all your flashlight uses AA batteries. Make sure your emergency radio uses AA batteries as well. And it just makes things much, much simpler rather than you having to buy three, four different types of batteries. Do try to keep them up in case high in case your house does get flooded and try to leave them in a centrally located place that you and your family, they all know where to go to find the extra batteries. The next item that they want you to have is a simple first aid kit. And I don't think that you need anything fancy, just a simple $15, $20 kit. This one here has uh, 66 items. Sometimes you'll see some that says we got a thousand items or 5,000 items, but you don't need anything like that for a household, just something simple. Um, just to take care of those minor cuts and injuries and keep them clean so they don't get infected. So you don't really have to put much thought into this. Just get a general first aid kit for uh, your home. And you may even want to have two, keep one in your emergency kit and then keep one somewhere else. Just because these are that important to have this in your home. So the next item that they want you to have is seven days worth of any medication that you may be on. This is especially true if you are on some sort of life-saving medication. You just really want to pay attention to this and don't wait until you're down to your last one or two doses before you go and get a refill. And if you know that there's a storm coming, a hurricane, a blizzard, go out and get that refill sooner rather than later. You don't wanna be stuck in a situation where you're in the middle of a bad blizzard, you're out of medication, you have to go to the pharmacy and put yourself at risk just to try to get more of your medication. So try to have at least one week's supply of any medications that you're on. And I would actually go a little further than this and make sure you also have some other more generic medication like ibuprofen and melatonin, have that stockpiled up in your home as well, just in case you need it during that emergency. So the next items that they want you to stockpile is extra sanitation items. So these are gonna be things like extra toilet paper and paper towels and wet wipes, but also maybe some extra toothbrushes and extra toothpaste in case you have company over that is sheltering in place with you. And honestly, like you can buy toothbrushes and toothpaste for so cheap. It's just worth it just to go to Dollar General, spend $10 on some extra sanitation items like this and just keep it in your emergency kit and just leave it there for an emergency. These things have incredible shelf lives. They, they could be sitting there for five years and you'd be perfectly fine using them. So just kind of think of what sanitation items do you use on a daily basis Try to buy some extra and set those aside somewhere in your emergency kit. So the next thing that you wanna have is copies of important documents. So these are gonna be things like marriage certificates and copies of your insurance and deeds to your home and medical records. Print all of these off and keep them someplace secure. At the very least, stick them in a plastic baggie like this and keep them in your emergency kit. You could go one step further and actually buy like a secure fireproof safe. That's where I keep a lot of my important documents in case my home ever burns down. But there are many scenarios where people have had to completely rebuild their lives from scratch. Just think of all the people who have lost their homes in the forest fires out in California, many of them losing important documents forever. If you had just a copy of a lot of those essential documents, it'd make things much, much easier. Think about many of the people who got flooded down in like New Orleans or the Gulf Coast when they get hit by that double hurricane last year. Many people lost all these essential documents. And if you just had copies of them, it would make rebuilding your life and starting from scratch so, so much easier. So definitely print off copies of important documents 
keep them in a waterproof container and keep those in your emergency kit as well. So the next one's pretty simple, but you want extra cell phone chargers. And honestly, these things are so cheap and inexpensive today, you might as well buy two or three of these to throw in your emergency kit. And I do recommend that you have a few different USB cables like this for a few different types of phones, just in case, again, you have somebody else sheltering in place with you, or maybe you change phones a few years down the line, but you forgot to update the cell phone charger and emergency kit. You know, just have a variety there of uh, things you can use to charge your phones. And this way, if there is an emergency, you can go out to your car and charge your phone with something like this, or you can use this cable and charge your phone off of your emergency radio. But just have a, a one, at least one cell phone charger, if not a few of them, and try to have a variety in the type of connections that you have for those as well. So next, they want you to have print offs of your family and friends contact information. So have a sheet with all your friends' phone numbers and mailing addresses on there in case you do need to evacuate your area in a pinch and maybe your cell phone's not working or maybe your children need to find their uncle's house. Having that printed off and having their address on there is gonna make things so much easier. You know, the truth is all that information is just in our cell phones these days. You know, we don't really memorize people's phone numbers as much these days. So having records of that in case your cell phone is not available anymore is could literally be a lifesaver right there. So print them all off, keep them in a waterproof container and keep your family and friends contact information and addresses in your emergency kit as well. So the next item that they want you to keep in your home is a physical map of the area. So again, we are way too dependent on our GPSs and that could very easily go away. You know, so having a physical map that you can use so that you can evacuate an area and find your way around could again be a lifesaver. You know, if I had to navigate to my uh, uncle's house in the next state over without a map uh, and without my phone, that would be incredibly challenging. So having a map like this could be really, really important if you do need to evacuate. And for whatever reason, your phone is just not working. You don't wanna be 100% dependent on your phone. You wanna have some backup options. So I definitely agree, spend $5 at your local gas station and get a physical map to keep in your home and keep in your emergency kit. So that's all the items that the American Red Cross wants you to keep in your home, but I do have a few additional bonus items that I personally recommend that you also keep in your emergency kit. And one of those is going to be a water filtration system. And again, there's a couple of different routes that you can go with this option with a couple of different price points. This one here is by Survivor Filter. And you can literally take contaminated water, dirty water, and you pump it through this filter and it pumps out pretty clean uh, potable water that you can drink. So that's one option is you can buy a filtration kit like this. Now, ideally you would have enough water for you and your family for a longer duration, but you know, uh, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. That's a quote from Mike Tyson. So having a backup plan for clean drinking water, I think is really important. So you could buy a larger kit like this, or you could buy something even simpler and buy a water bottle like this that has a filtration system built into it. So this, you could literally um, get some water from a stream. And as you drink through the, uh, the mouthpiece here, it sucks the water through a charcoal filter. And this can filter 99.9% .9 of all um, bacteria in it. And so this is just a much simpler and um, more affordable option for a lot of people. This thing is maybe $20, you can get some, one of these. You can also just buy a life straw. And a life straw, I have one around here somewhere, but it's very similar to this, except without the container. And you just kind of drink water straight through a water filter like that. So that's something that I definitely recommend that you explore as well. And having some sort of water filtration system in your emergency kit, just in case the disaster that you're in does get prolonged and you have to go without clean drinking water for multiple days. Now, another item that I'm a big fan of, including the emergency kit, is a simple propane container like this. You can buy these at Kmart or Walmart for camping, essentially. And a lot of them come with a stand and then an attachment like this that screws onto the top. So you can get a little flame, you can actually boil some water and actually cook something on top of this. All together, you can get this for again, $15, $20 at your Kmart or your Target. And this is gonna be, one, it could help you boil water to sanitize water. 
um, if your filter doesn't work or if you don't have enough water stockpiled. But uh, you can also cook food with this and you can get a warm meal this way. And just having like a hot meal or a hot cup of coffee or something, psychologically that can be a huge, huge boost. And they're pretty cheap and inexpensive. Just remember if you are using a burner like that, you really shouldn't be using it indoors because of the potential of carbon monoxide poisoning. So you do wanna use that outdoors. But nonetheless, having a simple little burner like that, they're pretty easy uh, to use and pretty compact. That is definitely a great bonus item to have in your emergency kit. So now you know what items the American Red Cross wants you to keep in your home at all times. Check out this video I did right here talking about how to start prepping for emergencies and kind of what those steps are to get prepared. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next video.